The rare NC900 flies for France in War Thunder. Let's check it out. The history of French aviation during the Second World War is complex and sometimes tragic. During the German occupation, factories were often set up or converted to produce German designs, and this included the FW-190 fighter. After the Allied landings at Normandy and the subsequent gradual liberation of France, the reconstituted French Air Force needed aircraft, any aircraft, and often resorted to somewhat creative solutions. One such example is how the NC-900 came to be. The French had a significant number of FW-190 airframes in various stages of completion. They had spare engines scattered across factories and secret warehouses, and a notable supply of spare parts salvaged from the wrecks of crashed 190s. The decision was made to cobble together flyable aircraft using all these spares, which were given the designation NC-900. These planes often mixed parts from FW-190 A5s and A8s, and sometimes the components weren't fully interchangeable between individual airframes, which led to all kinds of logistical difficulties. The French pilots absolutely hated these planes, as not only did they have significant reliability problems, and most of the cockpit instruments were still labeled in German, but some of the components had been sabotaged by the French resistance back during production before the liberation, and several finished planes had to be written off due to occupation-era sabotage. To make matters worse, many of the pilots had recently returned to France from flying on the Eastern Front with Soviet yaks against the FW-190, and understandably had a lot of resentment towards the German fighter. One French pilot described the NC-900 as giving him, quote, a bad aftertaste. The NC-900 wasn't used for very long, being withdrawn shortly after the German surrender, and in total, less than 70 operational examples were flown. What we get in War Thunder is the NC-900, an interceptor in rank 4 of the French air tree with a battle rating of 5.3. This plane was only available once, as the top reward from the Festive Quest holiday event at the end of 2017, and it's quite rare to actually see these out in live matches. The NC-900 has some heavy firepower. Its armament is a pair of 13mm MG-131 machine guns mounted above the nose, and four 20mm MG-151 cannons out in the wings. This set of six guns gives the plane a combined burst mass of over 6 kilograms per second, and to sweeten the pot, the plane carries a huge load of ammunition. You get 400 rounds per gun for the MG-131s and 250 rounds per gun for the MG-151s. For ammo belts, both guns get a good selection, but it's notable that the ballistics for some of the belts are different, so if you're used to using one, it might take a little adjustment to score hits with another. My personal preference is the Immediate Action Incendiary Belt for the MG-131 and the Air Targets Belt for the MG-151. The IAI Belt is really good at starting fires and getting bomber crews, while the Air Targets Belt on the 151 has tons of Minengeschoss rounds, which do enormous damage, even with all of the real shatter nonsense. And the combination of these two ammo belts provides some really absurd forward firepower for this plane. The NC-900 doesn't carry any bombs or other external ordnance. The flight performance on this plane is pretty average overall, but there are still some notes. First, the NC-900 has really impressive engine cooling. On most maps, you can run WEP basically non-stop without any risk of overheating. Plus, the engine cooling system is even a bit damage resistant and light hits to the engine area don't cause overheating problems as badly as they do in similar planes. The rate of roll is pretty good, especially at low altitude, and really all of this plane's performance is better at medium to low altitudes. If you climb up to like 6,000 meters or something, the plane struggles a bit, and even if you have good airspeed, basic flight controls like a moderate pitch up or some rudder input might not get you the results you want. The climb performance is fairly average, as is the acceleration, energy retention, and the overall level of dogfighting agility. Remember that this plane is cobbled together from leftover FW-190 parts, so the performance of the FW-190, which has fairly basic handling qualities, 
is the ceiling, not the floor. Another notable feature shared with a lot of 190 variants is that its dive performance is quite good, with full aileron authority even at high speeds, and it won't run into structural problems until a bit over 900 kilometers an hour. Really, this plane is built pretty tough. There aren't any combat flaps, and the overall maneuverability in a close-in turn fight isn't very impressive. This plane is all about firepower, not aerobatics. Taking the NC-900 out into air battles can be pretty rewarding if you're careful. Now, in realistic battles, the plane gets the interceptor spawn and is capable of climbing up to get most bombers, although its climb rate is still only average, so you're going to just barely make it against most opponents. Assuming you fly up there, the heavy firepower on this plane is going to make short work out of any of the bombers, but just remember that the flight performance isn't very good up at high altitude, so try not to engage any escort fighters up there. In the absence of escort fighters, the NC-900 is really good at diving attacks, so keep that in mind if you see someone below you who looks a little vulnerable. In terms of more traditional dogfighting, the real name of the game with the NC-900 is just abusing its excessive forward firepower. Try to use positioning tactics to get a good initial angle on the opponent, and either take them down outright in the first burst, or do enough damage on the first pass to screw up their flight performance so you can swing around and finish the job. The plane is absolutely not a turn fighter, so you're going to need to rely far more on positioning and vulture tactics rather than conventional air combat maneuvering up close. Now in arcade battles, the NC-900 is an absolute butcher. The buff to its flight model makes this plane an adequate dogfighter, plus it retains all of the insane firepower and Meningeschoss ammo, which combine to make this plane a credible threat to anything it can catch. With only a minimal amount of practice, you can usually get at least two or three kills every time you fly this thing out in arcade battles, and this plane might actually be a really good choice in a French lineup for grinding holiday events. Now, one thing this plane isn't really good at, though, is ground attack. The cannon armament can take out most light targets, some medium targets, but no external ordnance. Overall, I really don't suggest this as a primary aircraft for a close air support or ground pounding. Visually, this plane, well, it looks like a French FW-190, because it is. I've always liked the 190, and this plane is no different. Only one paint job, though, but overall, it's still pretty nice to look at, and it's got a pleasing shape. Landing the NC-900 isn't too difficult. The landing gear is pretty far forward, and it resists nosing over so long as you don't completely lock up the brakes at high speed. You can drop landing flaps and gear slightly over 300 kilometers an hour. The cockpit on this plane, well, it looks really dated. The visibility outside is good, but the internal details look pretty bad and just aren't nearly as good as most other cockpits in War Thunder. Functional, but it ruins the immersion in VR. To close out on the NC-900. This plane has absurd firepower with plenty of ammo. It gets an air spawn in RB. It has basically unlimited web. And it gets premium bonuses. However, its overall dogfighting agility isn't great. It flies pretty bad at high altitude. And the acceleration isn't impressive. The final verdict on the NC-900 is that this plane is, overall, still pretty good, mostly thanks to the impressive firepower for its BR. Its playstyle will take some practice to master, but if you see this plane pop up during a holiday event, it's worth checking out. As always, thanks for watching.